in high definition. Coverage you can count on. This is WJBF News Channel 6. Good morning, Augusta. If you're just waking up, you, you heard right. The, the Lizard Man. The Lizard Man. The Lizard Man. Oh, yes. God. Yes, that's in like 20 minutes from right now. In the meantime, uh, thanks for being up with us, everybody. Good morning, Augusta. I'm John Hart. And I'm Kevin Iwood, and a rare treat. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. I, if this is a treat, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an, we'll, how you about guys a rare need really adjustment. better Saturday morning. I can a tell you rare that. rare adjustment for you. <laughs> that's for sure. I'm not usually up this early, but it's good to be here. It's good to be with you. And uh, yeah, you know, nice morning so far. Mm -hmm. A little on the muggy side, but. Uh, you know, it's not going to be 100 degrees today. That's the best news I've had in over a week. Other than me being here. Other than you being here. Yes. <laughs> See, you. we're having a lot of fun. See, lizard men, not 100 <laughs> degrees. You're with us. It's been a fun morning so far. Let's get you outside with our Jiffy Lube Skyview Network camera live in News Talk WGAC. Sun peeking up into a low cloud deck, which will be gone in about a couple of hours here, yielding plenty of sunshine. Temperatures right now lower to middle 70s here. 70 degrees in Aiken, 74 degrees at Augusta's Bush Field. Across the Augusta Metro, 74 degrees downtown, 74 also north Augusta, 75 Evans, Grovetown, Fort Gordon. And elsewhere across the CSRA, we're already at 77 degrees in Washington, Wilkes County for the morning. We'll be in the 80s by 10 o'clock here with some sunshine by the afternoon. Low 90s for highs. 93 is actually today's average temperature, John. So who would have known? Days with low 90s in August instead of 100 with just obscene humidity, it exists. And that's what a sunrise looks like. That's what, that was the sunrise. Not bad, huh? I'm used to seeing it go the other way. Yeah, the sunset. I'm with you. All right, Kevin, yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> uh, cleanup continues today in Washington County after two trains ran into each other. Uh, it happened near the intersection of Georgia Highway 242 and Sun Hill Grange Road. That's about six miles southeast of Sandersville there in Washington County. Four people taken to hospitals, two flown to Georgia Regents Medical Center. A Norfolk Southern spokesperson tells us one of the trains was headed to Savannah from Atlanta. The second was an industrial train used to haul wood chips and scrap metal uh, around Sandersville. You can count on News Channel 6. We'll keep you updated as the cleanup continues this weekend. Get out your shopping list today. It is tax-free weekend in South Carolina. You have today and tomorrow to take advantage. Clothing and shoes, school supplies, computers and accessories, all on the long list of other items that are included. There are price limits on the items, so you want to check out that list at WJBF.com before you head to the store. Georgia's tax-free holiday, of course, was last weekend. Speaking of money, the city of Augusta had a great July, at least economically speaking. The Augusta Convention and Visitors Bureau says tourism in the Garden City last month brought in $9 million. We asked the Bureau CEO, Barry White, why we're seeing an increase in visitors over the past couple of years. If you look at all the sporting events in July, more than $7 million worth of impact from sporting events. And then close behind, uh, which was not the norm, but we, host, we hosted two very large religious groups. Uh, several thousand people uh, total in those religious groups, and those were some that we worked uh, to get. In there. Those uh, sporting events he's talking about include the Peach Jam and, of course, the Augusta Southern Nationals, which brought in an additional $821,000. Another big money maker for Augusta is just around the corner. you got the annual Half Ironman race set for Sunday, September 27th. The 70.3-mile race includes both downtown Augusta and parts of Aiken County. Augusta Sports Council still needs volunteers to help out. If you're interested, we have that information on how you can lend a hand also on our website, WJBF.com. First leg of that race is uh, the Savannah River, which is back open and safe for swimming today, two days after some sort of substance was found floating on the surface near downtown. The do not swim order that was put in place on Thursday has been lifted. Officials say the water is safe to swim. The exact source of the leak has not yet been determined. Three teens face charges this morning after all Columbia County schools were put on a lockdown yesterday. Authorities say 18-year-old Jeremiah Hawkins charged with possession of a firearm while on school property, criminal trespass, and pointing a firearm at another. 17-year-old Aaron Lott will be charged with felony criminal trespass, possession of a firearm by a person under 18, and possession of a firearm while on school property. Investigators say videos posted to social media yesterday morning showed the suspects with guns in the Lakeside High School parking lot. A sheriff's office spokesperson says the teens were threatening to follow through with a school shooting. Suspects were arrested in Aiken County. Columbia County Schools started the new school year just three days ago. A Columbia County man is facing a child molestation charge today 
after being accused of inappropriately touching a young girl. William Roberts, arrested, charged, no bond. According to the incident report, he spoke to and inappropriately touched a young girl at the Grovetown Walmart. He is also accused of two other similar incidents. Uh, no charges have been filed in those. Richmond County investigators say three men, Antonio Rivers, Brandon Jackson, and Marcellus Nipple, are all charged with aggravated assault and felony murder in the death of Carlton Nipple. Investigators believe the three suspects, along with Carlton Nipple, were in an argument with Sidney Carter when Carlton Nipple pulled a gun on Carter. They say Carter shot and killed Carlton Nipple, but is not being charged. Come Monday, some Richmond County deputies will have another weapon in the fight against crime. They're, they're doing final training on body cameras, getting ready to turn them on next week. Mike Miller got a look at those devices and what they mean for you. Uh, well, we received our first batch in, our first load, which is good. Uh, our deputies are actually in the process right now as we speak of going through the training. Starting next week, if you interact with a Richmond County deputy, it could be recorded on a body camera. So we're also doing our background checks on uh, our new Texts that are going to be coming in and, and downloading, uploading the footage from the uh, the, the body worn cameras, uh, storing them, and the whole nine yards. They also have to be kind of trained as well. Sergeant Shane McDaniel says he has received nothing but positive feedback from the deputies who have been testing the equipment the past few months. He says there will be a learning curve with the equipment, but he doesn't expect any problems. Basically, it's going to be recording every time they, they receive a call. Deputies will have to remember to turn the devices on when they interact with the public. McDaniel says the cameras are being used for officer safety and to make the sheriff's office more open and transparent. It's going to confirm the validity of an allegation that might come in on a road deputy uh, or is going to show that that statement's not true. McDaniel says hundreds of complaints come into the sheriff's office each year. All body camera videos will be used as evidence, which makes McDaniel wish he had body cameras many years ago. When I was on road patrol, I didn't have the dash cam. I didn't have the computer, the MDT in our car. There have been questions about deputies tampering with the video, but McDaniel says there are policies in place to make sure that doesn't happen. It's basically a win-win for the Richmond County Sheriff's Office and the public in general. Those cameras are going to be rolled out throughout next week. After the first 100 are given out, more cameras will be bought for the remaining deputies. Looking ahead to a big weekend across the CSRA. Richmond County's top cop wants to hear from you. The Sheriff's Office's Burgers and Shakes event going on from 11 until 2 today at the Alleluia Community School. Sheriff Richard Roundtree is going to be there. He wants to listen to your concerns and share a burger with you and some handshakes. Also, the nonprofit group Hungry No More is providing 750 bags of food for area students in Graniteville today. It's going on at the Family Y on Trolley Line Road from 10 until 2. Food bags include PBJ, sandwiches, applesauce, and juice. Mm -mm -mm. Also going to be free haircuts, eye and ear screenings, and ID kits for kids in grade school.